Hey guys, welcome back. Miss Harris here. So last time you saw me, we learned a little bit about St. Benedict and his role in the church and his role in prayer. Um, before we begin this video, though, I would highly recommend that you go watch my prayer basics video that's also up. Uh, this will give you a basic foundation for different parts of like how to prepare yourself to pray, which really can help improve your prayer time. So please go watch that video and then come back to this one. But today, we're going to be talking about his prayer method, Lexio Divina, and I'm going to teach you how to pray in Latin. So, ready? No, I'm not going to teach you how to pray in Latin. We are going to be covering some Latin phrases, though. Um, so, Lexio Divina uh, is Latin for divine reading. So lectio means reading, and it's a noun, kind of like as you hear in, on uh, Sunday Mass when you talk about the first reading or the second reading. So that type of the word reading. And then uh, divina means divine, as in inspired by the Holy Spirit. So you're going to be doing a reading while being inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that's the gist of Lexio Divina. So you're going to need a couple of things to get started. First, you're going to need a Bible. Second, you're going to need a pen and paper. And third, you're going to need some kind of timer. So this prayer method can be used with any part of the Bible. Uh, not all of the prayer methods that we'll be talking about in future weeks can use any part of the Bible, but this prayer method can. You can use any part of scripture, even the most boring bits. You can still use it to pray using this method. But this type of method only works best with about two to three verses. You don't want this massive chunk. You're not going to be praying over a huge part of the Bible, just like these short little itty bitty bits. So in this prayer method, you are basically on a treasure hunt with the Holy Spirit who is giving you a word in those verses that he wants to share with you. And this word is going to be kind of like a... a, a a diving board, if you will, into the swimming pool of prayer. So uh, the Holy Spirit is going to give you a launching point, and that launching point is almost kind of like an entryway, a little crack in the wall that opens up a whole new sphere of prayer that we're going to enter into. So that's what we're paying attention for as we're using Lexio Divina. We're paying attention to finding that one word that the Holy Spirit is going to give us, and then we're going to use that to start the whole rest of our prayer. Before you begin this prayer method, you should say a quick prayer to the Holy Spirit, asking him to be present in your prayer and to show you the word that he wants to reveal to you. So now we begin with the actual prayer method. It has four steps, one, two, three, four, four steps, and this is where the Latin is going to come in. So step one is called Lexio in Latin, and we already talked about what this means. This means reading. You're going to take your chunk of verses and you're going to read it three times. Yep, three times. The first time you are going to read it slowly, more slowly than you ever thought possible. You are going to read each word one by one, that slowly. This is setting you up to paying attention to every single word, no matter how small and no matter how insignificant, is if you pause and you read each little word, one by one. And it's setting your mind up, it's setting your soul up, it's paying attention to every single word. You're not reading it to understand it yet. The second time you read it, you read it a little bit more clicky, quickly, but still slowly. You read it to understand what's being said. Now, do you have to understand everything? Do you have to understand every word? No, you don't. The Holy Spirit doesn't need you to understand in order to help you pray. Surprise! You need to be reading it the second time, a little bit more quickly, trying to understand to the best of your ability what's being said. And this time you're starting to pay attention, you're starting to pay attention to which words are sticking out to you. Like this word sticking out to me or this word sticking out to me or this phrase is sticking out to me. What's standing out to me? Um, and how do you know that a word is being given to you by the Holy Spirit? How do you know that a word is being uh, 
shown to you. It's your treasure hunt find. It's the word that prompts you to think about something, to want something, or to feel something. So that's what you're paying attention to in your own self as you're praying. You're paying attention to your thoughts, your feelings, and your desires. So the third time you read it, remember, first time, slowly. Second time, a little bit more quickly, trying to understand, but now paying attention to which words are standing out to you. The third time, you're again reading it slowly, but now you are really pausing. Read, 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 this word standing out to me, pause. Ask the Holy Spirit, is this my word? And you'll feel something in you. Yes or no? You'll feel something. And if it's not, then keep moving. Is it this word? No, it's not that word either. Is it this word? Ah, this one. This one is for me. Or maybe you won't hear the Holy Spirit. You won't hear a booming voice from God. Yes, this is the word I gave to you. No, you, you, you'll you feel a, a sureness in your own heart. Um, and if you don't feel that, that's okay. Prayer isn't about always about feelings. Um, go with the word that moves you the most. Go with the word that makes you think the most, that makes you feel the most, that makes you uh, hope the most or want the most. Um, now, you could be going through this and being like, but I don't think or feel or want anything as I'm reading all of this. I'm totally bored. Miss Harris, I'm totally bored. Why are we doing this? I don't think, feel, or want anything. Well, guess what? Then you're a robot or a rock. Pick one. Because it's impossible for a human being to not think, feel, or want something in any given moment. So how do I know this? Because if you just said that, Miss Harris, I am so bored and I'm not thinking or feeling or wanting anything, that feeling is called apathy. We actually have a name for it. Um, or you're feeling bored, or you're feeling like God isn't talking to you, or you're feeling like God's not there. Guess what? You are thinking. You're thinking God's not really there, or wow, I'd rather be doing this right now, or wow, that video game was so cool. Why can't I just keep playing that? Why do I have to do school at home? These are all thoughts and prayer. So this leads me into my next point about this first step, is that your thoughts, your feelings, and your desires, they do not have to be perfect. They don't have to be good. They don't have to be nice, holy, pious thoughts of, oh, Jesus, I love you so much. Hmm. No, that's not what, that's not prayer. That's fake. And so you want to be real. If you're thinking about, like, yeah, I'd rather be doing something else right now than praying. Yep, that's a, that's a legitimate the feeling. That's a legitimate thought. That's a very human feeling and a very human thought. Is that not worthy of prayer? That's a lie. No, we can pray about those things. So prayer doesn't have to be perfect. Your thoughts, feelings, and desires don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have nice, holy thoughts all the time. Sometimes you do have nice, holy thoughts, and then you take those and you pray with them. It's great. Um, but anyway, you just have to pay attention to what's going on inside of you and being honest with yourself. So that's step one, that's Lexio. Now we move on to step two. Step two is oratio. Oratio in Latin means prayer or to pray. Um, orare means to pray. And so oratio is a prayer. And so now what you're going to do is you're gonna take this word that's moved your thoughts, your feelings, and your desires, and you are now going to focus on God and talk to God about that word that he gave you. So how are you going to do this? Very simply, you imagine Jesus standing in front of you. Go ahead, imagine it. Close your eyes. By the way, why do we close our eyes when we pray? That seems so stupid, silly, boring. Like, wow, people seem so fake when they close their eyes. Like, all these thoughts go through our heads. Actually, closing our eyes has a very real thing because it closes down my vision so that I can focus on what's going on spiritually and I'm not getting distracted by what I'm seeing. So now I want you to close your eyes for realsies. Close your eyes. I want you to imagine Jesus and we'll do this tomorrow in prayer so you don't have to do it right now. But you close your eyes, you imagine Jesus. Where is he in relation to you? Is he standing? Is he sitting? Is he next to you? Is he in front of you? Is he behind you? Where is he? Where is Jesus? Imagine Jesus in front of you. What does he look like? What is he wearing? What is his facial expression? What is the look in his eyes? All of these things. Try and imagine Jesus standing in front of you. And then once you have that image of Jesus, tell him what you're thinking, feeling, and desiring about that word. 
just talk at him. You don't have to say super flowery, pretty words. You don't, your words don't have to be perfect. Jesus knows that we're not perfect, so he's not, not going to demand a perfect prayer. You don't sugarcoat things. You don't downplay them either. You just be honest. Just be honest about what you're thinking, feeling, and desiring, even if you feel nothing. Tell Jesus, Jesus, I feel nothing right now. Jesus, I feel bored right now. Jesus, I really don't want to talk to you right now. Or, Jesus, this is a really hard day. I'm having a really hard time staying at home all this, like, for the next couple of weeks. I really miss my friends. Um, Jesus, I'm actually really enjoying having the next couple weeks off from school. This is great. I'm loving it. Or, you know, Jesus, I'm really having a hard time with that person who got sick. Or maybe this person in class is mean to me and bullying me. All of these things. And maybe the word stirs that up. Maybe the word stirs that up in your heart. So being honest, being open and being honest. All right. So this step, you are simply being sh like sharing. You're simply sharing the word and sharing what the word is doing for you in your heart with God. That's all you're doing. And that's preparing you for the next step. Step three, meditation, meditatio. I gave you the word away, I gave the word away, meditation. So this step, we spent the first step finding the word. The second step, we spend sharing our response to the word with Jesus. And now we're pausing and letting Jesus share with us what he thinks about the word that he gave us. So this is a step where we invite God in to speak to us about the word. We've just finished telling God our response and now we're asking God to share with us. So what does this look like? So now this imaginary Jesus that we've imagined, which is actually Jesus, by the way, because God can use our imagination to speak to us. And it's a very valuable prayer tool. So don't just think, oh, this is an imaginary Jesus. This is God really talking to you. It's prayer. So imaginary Jesus, ask him to share what he has to say the word about the word that the Holy Spirit gave you. Ask him to share about it. And this part is different for every single person. And it's been different for me in so many different ways. The times that I've prayed, he could uh, be speaking to you. He could be doing something. He could be saying something. He could be looking at you in a certain way. He could be showing you something. Jesus is going to do something to you in prayer. So let him, but it's going to look different every time. You can't expect him to behave the same exact way every single time. God's not a robot. He's a person. He's three persons actually, but God's a person and he's going to behave like a person. So let him actually do something to you in this stage of prayer. So calm your mind and your heart in this stage and just let God speak to you. Step four is contemplatio. So now what does contemplatio sound like in English? If you said contemplate or contemplation, then you're right. Uh, this last step is actually probably the most mysterious step of all of them and the most prayer-like out of all of them because this last step is a pure gift from God. So step four, contemplation, it's actually the highest form of prayer in the Catholic church. Contemplation is the highest form of prayer that we can ever do. It starts by simply, so we've had now, we've, we've, we've found our word. We've shared what we've thought about the word. God has shared back. And now we just let everything fall away and we rest in God with that word that he gave us. It's simply resting in God. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to think anything. You don't have to be anything. You just have to be with God and that word and just let God love you in that word that he gave you. Um, this step is probably both the easiest and the hardest because we don't have to do anything. God does all the heavy lifting. God does all the work. It's his prayer. It's his prayer. Uh, it's, it's his job to take care of this part of the prayer. So it's both the easiest, but it's also the hardest because God doesn't give us the gift of contemplation every time. 
when you hit contemplation, you know it because everything falls away and it's just you and God. And it's not like God's like standing in front of you in a vision and you're all of a sudden the next saint that's going to be a vision. No, it's nothing like that. It's a very normal experience, but it's just you and God and just God loving you and reaffirming your goodness for however long he lets it happen. Um, so if God gives you the gift of contemplation, fantastic, great. If he doesn't, fantastic, great. You just spend time resting with God. That's all you do. You don't have to do anything. And this last step can last, I say, take a minimum of two minutes, set your timer, set it for two minutes. And then if God sends you off on contemplation land, great. Stay there for as long as you can. Don't end your prayer early. You won't want to. It's so amazing. You won't even want to end it. So, um, but give yourself two minutes, two minutes to just rest and let God love you. So that's Lexio Divina in a nutshell. Once you've finished the last step, I recommend ending with an Our Father or a Hail Mary, thanking God for all the gifts that he has given you during this time of prayer, even if you don't feel like you've received anything, because God is always giving us gifts, always. You cannot not receive gifts from God. So I may have used too many negatives there. God gives us gifts and we can receive them. That's basically what I was trying to say. Uh, and so even if we don't feel like we've received anything, uh, God has given us something in prayer. And so we thank him for it. We thank him for that hidden gift that we can't see yet. All right, Lexio Divina in a nutshell. In our next video, uh, Miss M and I will be walking you through this prayer process step by step with actual times and everything so that you'll be able to see how we do this process step by step. We'll give you all the questions. We'll have the verse ready for you. We'll get everything ready. So all you'll need is a space bar to press play. That's about it. Um, yeah, and then Miss M and I will also share our experiences. Like we'll share the word that God gave us and we'll share like how that moved us and what that did for us. So that way you can see how people that use this prayer method actually, how it actually works. All right, so I'll see y'all on the flip side.